Welcome everybody. I see my precious wife Jackie's here. Marcus, I don't know what I'd do without her. She's so precious. What a gem. What a gem. I know you feel the same way about Cindy. Hi, cats. How are you? I'm doing good. Wonderful. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, cats, we have a prayer request. And if um, Ted Rowe is on with us tonight, yes, Ted's on. I'll call him, ask him after I introduce him to, to share with us what the uh, prayer request is so that the prayer warriors can begin praying. Okay? Christy, how are you, Christy? I am wonderful. How are you today, Mr. Fine, Carter? I am blessed the Lord. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your communications. Megan. Mm, thank you. Praise God. Hey, Megan. Hey, Pastor Carter. How are you? Praise God. Praise God. It's 406 California time, huh? We have a California. Yes, sir, it on. is. God bless you. Thank you for signing up for the next course, Understanding the Bible. It's going to be awesome. I'll talk I'm to so you excited. Good, good. Yep, I'm very excited. Good. I'm glad you're time. teaching it. I was hoping. Okay. <laughs> Expect great things. Expect great things. Not because I'm teaching it, but because of the content of the course. I will be doing that. Fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Hi, Patricia. Patricia Hoffman, she's here. Hi, Patricia. Hi. <laughs> How are you, Patricia? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. Blessed. We just thank God. We just praise God oh, yeah. for what he's doing in our lives. And, and you all are helping to enrich our lives. Um, you give us a real reason for doing what we're doing. And uh, we're watching you all grow. We're talking about, I'm talking about all of you students now. And uh, Patricia, I thank you for being a part of this course. Oh, thank you. I mean, this course has absolutely been such a blessing for me. I can't even describe it in words because um, before this course, I did, I did not know um, and did not even know how to start to journal. And, and I really, I really, um, this is awesome. Praise God. Uh, <laughs> God. Isn't, isn't journaling awesome? I mean, you were scared at first, weren't yeah. you? Well, I, yeah, a little hesitant, but, you know, I know the Lord was just, you know, he just, like, he threw me in the river. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And said, so you're going to swim. All right. Praise God. Yeah, I'm going to No, but he did. He, he, um. You know, he gave me vision, and and so I've never had that I've never had before, and um and he jump started me. You know, praise God, yeah. praise God. He, he does that sometimes, and I just yeah. I'm looking at how our our class is learning how to journal, and um this is this is the way people get the answers to their questions. You you can go directly to your father and and talk with him. Praise God. Praise God. Hi, I Shelley. Oh, okay. Patricia, you can come back. Hi, Dr. After Carter. Shelley. Yes. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank I'm you. I'm fine. I'm doing great. Praise God. Doing great. God bless I'm gonna you. Be signing up for, I'm going to be signing up for the Understanding the Bible. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I will mention that in a moment um, uh, on the mm -hmm. Understanding the Bible course. Okay, so we thank you, Shelly. Praise God. Uh -huh. Okay, Patricia, come back. I didn't mean to cut you off. I apologize. Oh, no, I, I, that's okay. I don't want to hold up your time. But, um, you know, um, I have not been um, journaling as much. So I'm just confessing that to you. <laughs> Why okay. you haven't gotten it. Okay, you're confessing. So I'm, I'm confessing, yes. Okay, and, so um, I I don't have I don't need an you know an excuse is an excuse. I don't want an excuse. You know, I don't want to 
start that, you know what I mean? So, um, I, and what I have in trouble with is, is, um, cause there's so much going on. I got to, um, quiet myself down. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know, right? Okay. So, yeah, Patricia, but... you, are you going to quiet yourself down and, 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 and put a little, <laughs> little bit more time, take time off your agenda and give God that quiet time? Honor him uh, with your questions and honor him with your 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 yes. patience and wait for him. Patricia, you'll see a life change yes. take place when you do that. Yeah, I and I was talking today earlier about um <clears throat> I'm so anxious to get reti to retire because this job that I'm doing is so demanding and I need to get you know, I need to make that step. <laughs> Okay. And I don't have, but I have like two years left before I'm eligible for full benefits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. Now, may I may I say share something with you? Sure. God does not give us the spirit of fear, and so no, and no. so so don't even let fear grip you in that area. Retirement is beautiful. I'm doing more in yeah. retirement than I did in all my years of working, and I worked hard. But also, Patricia, I'm hearing from God more, and I'm learning how to give him more time and more attention. Yeah. Okay, so what mm -hmm. you're practicing now, even though you're, you're looking at a window of two years to retirement, and I sense a little bit of anxiety there, and a little bit of, I got to do this, I've got to complete this. But when you uh, cast down those vain imaginations and say, okay, I'm going to learn how to journal now. I'm going to learn how to get into God's presence now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take mm -hmm. all this anxiety off me, all this worry. Mm -hmm. Patricia, watch and see the change it'll make. I mean, by the time you reach retirement, you'll say, wow, you know, the Lord's been preparing me for the last two years for this and I'm hearing his voice and I did not imagine that I'll be doing this. So settle yourself down, even if you have to get up a half hour earlier or um, uh, take a little break from a TV program or whatever and just set aside that quality time. And, and I think I'm teaching to a lot of people right now, Patricia. Give God yeah. that time now, and you give him that yeah. time now, and when the time comes for you re to retire, you're going to see a smooth transition and an even greater window opening for you at the time of retirement than you can see right now. Why? Because you're going to start focusing on God, and you're going to give him an extra 15 minutes a day or an extra half hour. You're going to give him that extra time, and that's going to be God's time. Nobody else's time, but God's time. And watch how God will honor that, Patricia. Oh, yes. I, I'm. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Carter. Now, you know, now, I, now class, did I, I, I did I beat her up? Did I jump on her with all fours? <laughs> did, did, hey, uh, uh, um, Cats, did no. I beat her up or did I lay that out there nice and smoothly? Oh, nice and smoothly. Just <laughs> like, fine. you're so good at that. Okay. Praise <laughs> God. Praise God. Thank Praise you. God. Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. Ted Rowe. Hey, Ted Rowe, would you come on, please, and talk to us? And, Ted, what I'd like to do is ask you to share with the group. These are your brothers and sisters. These are your prayer supporters. And Katz heads up the prayer group uh, for the Paul Begley Ministries. So, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Ted to share with me what, share with the group what you shared with me today so that we can get prayer power in on your behalf to help your grandson. Ted? Okay, my uh, grandson's name is Drake Farrell. He's been having laryngitis for about four or five months, and they've been checking him out, and he's been to more than one doctor, and they finally figured out that he has uh, four limbs glands that are swollen in his lungs. One of them is close to an artery in his heart. And so there's like only two centimeters to where they take a biopsy or take it out. So they're going to open up his chest like heart surgery and take uh, this one out and probably some others. So I'm going to ask for prayers to help him get through this. 
And uh, you know, like last year, he he uh, threw gas on the fire, and we had prayers for him. He come out pretty good from that. So I'm asking again for prayers for him uh, to get through the surgery. And uh, you know, they su suspect it might be possible lymphoma. Well, we're going to pray that he doesn't have the lymphoma and help him get through this. And uh, just asking for all your prayers for him. He's uh, like 17 years old. Okay, okay. I just put in the chat one of the Ted's grandson is Drake Farrell. And um, we're going to be praying for Drake Farrell. And, and uh, we're going to believe God that uh, it's not lymphoma and that uh, the surgery is going to go well. Let's pray uh, for a total healing, total healing. They're going to go through his chest uh, to remove lymph lymph modes lymph nodes lymph nodes they're going to do heart surgery to remove lymph nodes and uh, let's pray right now would you join me in prayer for a uh, drake farrell father god in the name of jesus we thank you for ted's uh um macedonia call and he's doing it in faith and we're his brothers and his sisters and we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You said if any two of us agree as touching upon anything we ask you in the name of Jesus, that you will do. And so we ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will bless Drake Farrell, that you will guide the doctors and the surgeons, that you give him the healing that he so needs. We know you are the doctor. You're the physician. You're the great physician. You're Jehovah Rapha. And so we uh, put this petition in your hands, God, and, and we trust you that you're going to do this. And we stand in agreement, Father, that you're going to do it exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, above all that Ted and his family can ask or think. And we thank you. And, Father, we pray that you'll give Drake a long life and that he has served you for all of his life, that you empower him, and, Father, that he will know that he knows that he knows that you did this for him and we praise praise you father and we thank you and we pray this in agreement in the name of jesus we thank you father amen amen let the church say amen praise god thank you ted thank you ted now it's in god's hands we we rest our case in his hands and we will just wait to see what God can do. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just share something uh, about the power of prayer. And uh, cats can tell you about the power of prayer. When, when we pray, God hears us. And the scripture says, if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. That's one of the blessings of being a believer. In one of our courses, in our current Understanding the Bible course, and these are students who took the course you're taking now, we have a student in Texas, and she has been praying for a friend of hers and co-worker who needed a heart, I'm sorry, a liver and kidney transplant. About two months ago, she was so distraught on the, on the uh, Wednesday night class that uh, she was saying that they don't think he can make it, uh, they don't think he's going to live, and this and that, and we began praying, ladies and gentlemen. And and um, and she said he's so heavy, uh, needs to lose so much weight. They don't think he could even stand a transplant and this and that. And uh, it's so hard to get on the transplant list in Texas. So we began praying. And so on um, May 1st, just a couple of days ago, this man was placed on the transplant list. The doctor said his body was now ready for a transplant. Now, you know, anyone who's had a transplant, it takes time to find a donor, uh, whether it's a, a, a family member, a friend, or a cadaver. Um, it takes time. That was May 1st when she said the doctors agreed that now he can go on the transplant list. And so we began to pray, and we be, began to ask God to raise up a, a, a donor for him, find a, a, a double organ uh, donor kidney and liver today ladies and gentlemen today uh, she sent me a text message and I sent it out to all of her classmates 
that today in the Corpus Christi Medical Center, this man is undergoing a double transplant today, a kidney and liver transplant. And so we praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it, Ted, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. You pray and ask God and don't doubt in your heart, even when things look like it's impossible. We serve we serve the possible God. With God, all things are possible. So we just want to praise God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. I know we're, we're, we're off our subject for tonight, but hey, don't worry about it. The tape is going to be short and the class is going to be short. But we just want to... I just wanted to tune in and get your hearts tuned in to Ted's needs and as as a testimony to what God can do and what we believe he will do. I just shared how God broke through and 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 demonstrated to to a, another student who's taken the very course you're taking, who learned uh, uh, Patricia, she learned how to. Uh, journal the hard way. She fought it. She didn't know if it was of the Lord and she fought it and had never done this before. And people say, girl, you're crazy. God doesn't hear you. Well, she fought through that, Patricia. And the Lord demonstrated to her that he hears her. And God demonstrated big time today by letting her know he heard her prayers and the prayers of the saints and has given her friend, her co-worker, a double transplant. So we just praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're doing and studying now is life changing. And we praise the Lord. Marcus Wolverton, what do you have to say about all this? God answers prayer. No doubt. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Praise the> Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hey, Brother Marcus, no matter how dark things look, no matter how difficult things look, God is saying to us, we walk by faith. Not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. So we thank God. What a what a mighty God we serve. So Father God, we just bless you and praise you and thank you. And as we enter into a summary of of our assignments for this week and listen to the last um, um, recorded message from Dr. Verkler, we just thank you for this class. These courageous uh, men and women who are taking this course and who are uh, pressing into your presence. Lord, reward them mightily, Lord. Reward them. Speak to them in the night hour, in the morning, at noontime, all the day long. Uh, walk with them and let them know that you're with them at all times and, and, and show up, God, and, and do exceedingly abundantly above all that they can ask or think. And then, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you raise up a cadre of prophets and teachers and po apostles, preachers and evangelists, that you'll raise up a school of prophets in the school, Paul Begley School of Prophecy, who will take your word, who will hear from you and will take your word, not only to this nation, but to the nations, that multitudes of souls will be saved, that people will be healed and delivered, and that they will be worshipers of the Most High God. We ask your guidance tonight, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Tonight's lesson is going to be a rather short, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to review the requirements for um, your, your exercises that you're to send me, to me this week, lesson 10. And then we're going to listen to Dr. Verkler. The tape is only 37 minutes, and some of it is commercial. And so we're not going to listen to the entire 37 minutes. So um, we might be finished by about, hmm, we may be finished by about 8 o'clock. Praise God, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And so, so Megan can go out and enjoy some of the California evening. Praise God. Praise God. We're jealous, Megan, in a, in a, in a righteous way. Praise God. Okay. Um, before I go into the summary of the class, it is my recommendation that each of you take the next course, Understanding the Bible. Understanding the Bible begins on June 2nd. It is an awesome course. It is a wonderful course. Um, um, God blessed me to write the textbook and to design the course. And the people who have taken this uh, 
course, are delighted. I mean, their testimonies are awesome about what they're learning about the Bible and how easily, how easily they're learning, learning about the contents of the Bible from Genesis to a Revelation, learning about the writers, learning about the times and the settings of, of the, the writers. And I, I'd highly recommend this to you. Pastor Paul and I talk, and we, uh, we agree that all of the students in this course, in this class, in the school, as they go on and pursue degrees, everyone ought to have the foundational course, communion with God, and then the next course, understanding the Bible. Now, if you cannot take understanding the Bible next semester, uh, it's, we're looking at the summer months, June to August the 31st, and um, some of you will be going on vacations, you have family obligations, uh, we understand. And if you cannot take it this next semester, take it in the September se semester. But if you want a substitute course, if you want to, as you continue, here there are two courses you can take, or one of two, or you can take two together, um, and they're lighter courses. It's reading, but not a whole lot of writing, not a whole lot of uh, work. I finished each, each of these 12 week courses in six weeks um, uh, just a few months ago. So I'm talking about um, the courses Gifted to Succeed, which is a marvelous course that evaluates your spiritual gifts and puts you on track. Uh, it really does a lot of talking about the left brain person and the right brain person and, and the, the skill skills and the gifts of, of left brainers and right brainers and then it assesses in several assessments what your spiritual gifts are i found that course to be very very uh productive and and helpful to me um and then the second course if you want to take two at a time i'd recommend experiencing god in the small group uh, especially for those of you who um, have Bible studies and group meetings and and you're working with small groups this is an excellent way to present to learn how to present materials uh, in a small group and also to get the best out of that group and the, the the whole thing is we're not only building ourselves up but we're helping to build disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ who would teach others one can teach another and so um, also, as you pray and seek the Lord, whether whether or not you're going to take a course next semester or take the summer off and return in the fall, if you need to talk with me, I'm available and Jackie's available, give us a call. Our number is 770-559-9710. That's in the chat window. Okay. And my cell phone is 404. 205-1101. Be glad to talk with you. Be glad to talk with you. Okay, so we'd be glad to design your track, your course of studies um, from here on. Okay, are there any questions before we proceed with a review of your assignment for Lesson 10 in Communion with God? Okay, seeing no questions, and uh, Jackie has the chat window, and, and she's ministering there. Thank you so much, Jackie, for what you're doing. Uh, this week, Lesson 10, prayerfully read Chapter 10 of Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice. This is a marvelous book by Dr. Mark Verkler, Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice. All of his courses hinge upon what you learn in this book, Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice. And as you proceed in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, uh, we have purchased the curriculum from uh, Dr. Verkler's university, and um, his material is life-changing. Your second assignment, prayerfully read chapter 6 of Dialogue with God by Mark and his wife Patty. You're going to listen to session 10 tonight of the audio. This is the last audio. 
so for the next two weeks you, we will not have audio tapes okay so your classes will be shorter in the next two weeks as we close out this course memorize hebrews 10 22. hebrews 10 22 says let us draw near with a sincere heart heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water okay having our hearts sprinkled clean from a pure conscience and our bodies washed with pure water dr verkler is going to explain more about this uh, in his audio tonight as he takes us through the steps of praying the tabernacle prayer we've learned in this course how to pray the habakkuk prayer i will stand on my guard post and 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 sit on the watchtower and i will watch to see what the lord will say to me when i am reproved and the lord answered me and said write the vision uh, uh though it tarry it will surely come write the vision so that they who read it shall run with it um even though the vision will tarry it will surely come that habakkuk prayer is so important um that if we've we've learned the four keys to enter into god's presence to quiet ourselves look for spontaneity look for vision and then journal journal as god patricia as god gives you a vision or he may make it visual or he may give you something verbal um he may refer you to the logos the written word or he may speak the rhema word or he'll give you a visual a vision many people who are right-brained get visual get a uh, visualize a visualized message from god they will see something on the screen of their mind so we've learned about this in this course so far tonight we're going to look at the tabernacle prayer how to look at the model of the tabernacle which uh, eventually it was replaced by the temple and the tabernacle and the temple are replicas of what it looks like in the heavenly throne room and there are certain pieces of furniture that appeared in the tabernacle and were duplicated in the the temple and these uh, pieces of furniture relate to our inner body okay and so um, we're looking at the tabernacle the tabernacle in the wilderness we're looking at the temple built by solomon and then and then uh, when christ died for our sins and raised himself from the dead and he poured out the holy spirit upon the church we became the temple of god ladies and gentlemen the holy spirit no longer rests in the old testament tabernacle it's gone he no longer rests or resides in the Old Testament ta uh, temple the Holy Spirit he's omnipresent everywhere at once God he's God God the uh, Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit God wants to abide within believers ladies and gentlemen when we receive that that he dwells in us he tabernacles in us then once we receive that then we can uh, more readily pray to him and tonight you're going to get a picture of praying to god by visiting the different pieces of furniture that are in the tabernacle we're in the tabernacle we're in the temple and are now inside of us okay um starting with the the right attitude entering into his gates with thanksgiving in our heart every time we pray we're to enter into his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts just as the old testament people came through the gates of the tabernacle or through the gates of the temple into the temple courtyard when you enter into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart and the right attitude even though they were bringing a sacrifice to be offered for their sins we are learning through we will learn through this tabernacle prayer how to bring the sacrifice of praise unto the lord how to humble ourselves at the altar and the altar represents the cross of jesus the place where jesus died as we go to that first piece of furniture the altar and humble ourselves 
before Jesus Christ uh, who died on the cross and acknowledged that he died on the cross and uh, took away our sins and that he has washed us in his blood and has washed us in the pure water of the word. Then once you get that at that first station and then you visit the other pieces of furniture in the tabernacle, in the in, in your temple now, in your temple, uh, the table of showbread. Uh, we're going to learn about the table of showbread. We're going to learn about the, um, let me bring that, uh, that up. We're going to learn about the table of showbread. We're going to learn about um, the um, altar of incense. We're going to see the, the, the lampstand. All those things uh, that are talked about in this wonderful lesson that would be able to relate to it. And your prayer life, ladies and gentlemen, your prayer life is going to improve. Your prayer life is going to improve. So, um, memorize Hebrews 10.22 and then complete the self-test. Remember, there is no final exam in this course. Hallelujah. No final exam. You will have a final paper, which will be a two to three page summary of what you've learned in this course. And we will cover this in lesson 12, a two to three page summary, ladies and gentlemen. And 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 uh, I mean, I could write a two to three page summary cats with uh, if I go to uh, 48 font, 48 size font, man, I can knock that thing off in eight words. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't use those great big fonts, okay? Um, 12 is good, 12 is good. Okay, some of you use 14, but uh, 12 is good. I remember in high school, um, if, the, if they say, well, I want a five-page paper on this subject, and, and people would be writing, I mean, their cursive would be so big, man, those letters and the printing so big, but we don't do that anymore, praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Cat says, just make a banner. <laughs> right, right, right. Just make a banner. Praise God. Hallelujah. I even got Roy Rosser laughing on that one. Roy, how you doing, man? Roy, Roy that one got Roy. Because Roy, Roy probably used to do that in high school. Come on, Roy. <laughs> God bless you, man. Praise the Lord. Okay. If you turn to page... 17 of your communion with god binder page 17 let's look at the specifics of this assignment and pay attention because one of the questions on in this these seven questions you're not responsible for question number one write out hebrews 10 22. That's part A. Part B, in your own words, discuss, discuss its meaning as a fine-tuning dial to hear God's voice. Dr. Verkler is going to teach us tonight on his video, on his audio, about a fine-tuning dial to hear God's voice. Journal about this verse, asking the Lord what he wants to say to you personally from it and how he wants to apply it to your life. Question two, meditate on Hebrews 8, 5 and journal about it, asking God, God, what do you want to say to me about this verse and how should I apply it to my life? And ladies and gentlemen, anytime you ask God, God can speak to you. If you learn how to quiet yourself, uh, confess your sins. Don't approach God with sin in your heart or anger, anger or bitterness or a bad attitude. God's not going to hear you if you have a bad attitude and so there are certain um preparations we make before we even approach god the scripture says if i regard iniquity in my heart he will not even hear me so if i know i'm i'm uh going before god and i'm going before the throne of grace and i've got anger in my heart against anyone i can pray until uh the moon turns green but god will not hear me but if i confess my sins and humble myself before him and say, God, I'm a sinner. Uh, uh, I've sinned against you. Forgive me. Cleanse me. I confess this root of bitterness and, and I've been angry with so-and-so and ask for forgiveness and repent. Then you're a prime candidate 
for God to answer you and God will speak to you. And when he speaks to you, then write it down. And when you write it down, we call this journaling, journaling. Praise God. Uh, by the way, if you go on the Paul Begley website, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com, you can order a prayer journal, a yearly prayer journal. You can keep a yearly prayer journal. You can order that from uh, the um, website. Number three, in your own words, discuss the six pieces of furniture. In your own words, ladies and gentlemen, discuss the six pieces of furniture that are on uh, that we're we're talking about. Okay, if you look at if you can see the schematic, if you're online and you can see the schematic I have on the screen. I have on the screen the uh, schematic and the arrow on the far right. That's the entrance into the tabernacle. Now the tabernacle was built with skins. Uh, there were no, the walls were made of animal skins. The tabernacle was a hundred feet long and fifty feet wide. Okay, and um, it had three sections. It had the outer courtyard. That was surrounded by animal skins, and then it had the holy place, which concerned which which consisted of um, the following pieces of furniture: the table of showbread, the menorah or the candle, seven candlesticks, and the altar of incense. Now, in the outer courtyard, you had you had the altar of burnt offerings, and then the laver. The altar was a type since this was hundreds of years before christ came on earth the altar was a type of jesus christ hanging on the cross it was there that the people brought the animals of sacrifice presented them to the priest the priest slaughtered the animals and 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 burned the animals on the altar of burnt offerings as a way to cover their sins can you imagine the people leaving and going out and sinning again and having to come back and they had to come back and again and again and again but that's the way God provided for the covering of their sins their sins were not removed not during the Old Testament time were their sins removed their sins were not removed until Jesus died on the cross for all mankind after the altar of burnt offerings the priest then went to a laver it was a two bait had two basins a top basin and a lower basin one was for the priest to wash the blood off their feet and the dirt off their feet and then the other the top basin was to wash the blood off their hands and then the priests were allowed to enter into the holy place no one but the priests were allowed into the holy place Okay, Jews were allowed in the outer courtyard, but no one but the priest could go into the holy place. And in the holy place, uh, there was a table of showbread, which um, represented the word of God, ladies and gentlemen, the word of God, or Jesus Christ, the word of God. John said, and the word became flesh, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so um, the Old Testament table of showbread, that piece of furniture represents Jesus Christ or the word of God, that we are to live the word of God. We are to uh, live daily by the word of God. Jesus even said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then there was the menorah, the candlestick that have seven candles and this was the light that was inside the holy place. The priests had to keep those candles lit 24-7. They had to make sure oil was replaced in the, in the menorah. And this light represents the light of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. And as you listen to Dr. Berkler tonight, he's going to be teaching us about how we are to pray that the Holy Spirit enlighten our minds illumine our minds the holy spirit illumines 
the minds of the believers. And then there's the altar of incense, which uh, represents our worship and our praise and our relationship with others, ladies and gentlemen, our fellowship with the church, the body of Christ, our relationship with others. Okay, so if you're not attending a brick and mortar church, uh, you're not being penalized. But if you've cut yourself off from the body of Christ and you're lone rangering it, uh, that's difficult because we, the altar of incense symbolizes uh, our praise, our worship, and our fellowship and communion with God and with the body of Christ. Okay, and then the last piece of furniture was in this small room in the tabernacle and eventually in the temple called the Holy of Holies. It was 10 feet long by 10 feet wide, and it contained one piece of furniture, and that was the uh, Ark of the Covenant. On the top of the Ark of the Covenant was a, uh, a, a, a lid, and it was called the mercy seat. And God would speak to the high priest, or he would speak to Moses from the mercy seat. Right on the top of the Ark of the Covenant was the mercy seat. Inside that Ark, that little box, about three and a half feet by five feet, whatever, were three items. One, the Ten Commandments, the two tablets that God gave Moses, that God remade for Moses. Also, a a uh, a container of manna, manna, the bread from heaven was in there. And then the third piece of, uh, third item in the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod that budded. Aaron's rod, his walking stick, it budded and blossomed. Okay, so these are the pieces of furniture. Only the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies. And he had to be right. If if he if he had sinned and had sin in him, he had bells on the bottom of his robe, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine you have bells on the bottom of your robe, and if those bells are not ringing, that means to the people outside you ain't moving. And if you ain't moving, then if the high priest is not moving, he died. If he had sinned in this life, or he was not right. He died in the Holy of Holies. And then nobody could go and bring his body out, ladies and gentlemen. So they had a chain on him. They had a chain on his ankle and a rope. And the priest in the holy place would pull that rope, pull that chain, and drag him out of the Holy of Holies. No one, nope, the undertaker, the funeral director, could not go and get that body, ladies and gentlemen. No, the rescue people, the EMTs, could not go and get that body out of there. If the bells stopped ringing for a period of time and there was no evidence and they tugged on that rope and got no response, they knew he was dead. They knew that the high priest was not accepted by God, which lets us know, ladies and gentlemen, we can call pastors we can vote pastors into office and we can promote pastors and prophets and apostles and evangelists and all this we promote people in ministry but if god has not called them ladies and gentlemen that's a dangerous situation and there are many 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 churches that uh have leaders who have not been called you'll find in one of the pages on my in my book textbook i said some were not sent they went. They just went. They 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 ventured out on themselves to, to, to do ministry. But God must call you into the ministry, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to look at this. Um, and if anyone wants this schematic, I can email it to you. Um, I can email it to you. And uh, you can have the schematic of the tabernacle and the temple okay so praise god you give me a call or send me an email and i'll send this to you okay praise god continuing on in our, our assignment number four to complete the personal application on page 262 
See also page 133 of Dialogue with God. Just follow your, your um, guidelines in your workbook. Question six, five, what does the author mean by your promised land? What's he mean when he says God has given us a promised land? What does he mean by that? And discuss some of the things that may keep you from entering into your promised land. God has a promised land for all of us. Praise God, he's got the promised land in heaven. And he's got a promised land on this earth for us. Okay, you've got to find out what it is. And then number six, in lesson eight, you were asked to become more aware of the pictures you see in your mind and heart, testing them by their spirit, their ideas, and their fruit. Dis discuss your experience. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to at eliminate question eight, um, qu question six. And question seven. Do not do question six and question seven. Just do the first five questions for lesson 10 and send them in to me. Praise God. Are there any questions on the assignment? Okay, if there are no questions, then let's prepare ourselves uh this tape is 37 minutes long uh i imagine we do about 20 25 minutes of it and so we're not going to take a break we're going to go right into it okay praise god we're going to go right into hearing um from dr mark verkler and i appreciate dr verkler um I just sent him an email the other day. No, I sent him a letter, and um, he and I have talked. He and I, the author of these books, he and I have talked, and he's a very gentle man, very kind man, and we appreciate him very much. So let's listen to Mark Verkler. This is your final audio tape, but not your final class. We've got two more classes. So this is the final audio tape that you're responsible for. So please listen to it. Learn to recognize the voice of your Heavenly Father and come to know Him as your dearest friend. He wants to give you wisdom, understanding, and revelation for every area of your life. All right, our final session on how to hear God's voice. We're going to talk about a fine tuning dial to hear God's voice. Have you ever heard a sermon, I heard this years ago, have you ever heard a sermon where a pastor will say your heart is like a radio and you just tune the dial to tune in to hear God's voice? Have you ever heard that? If you have, say amen. I thought, well, that's, a great, that's great imagery. And so my next question was, give me a dial so I can tune it so I can hear his voice. And you know what? That was never in the sermon. There was, there was no, well, here is the dial. I said, well, what good is it to know that there's a dial that I can tune if you don't give me a dial? I just love practical teaching. And so I was a little bit frustrated. So the Lord finally gave me a tuning dial to tune my heart. So if I'm having trouble hearing, I can actually tune through several things. That tuning dial is found in the ta what we call the tabernacle experience, which in the big books, Communion with God, How to Hear God's Voice, it's on page 169 and 174. And uh, there's a scripture verse in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, which talks about the tabernacle. And it defines what's, what the God was doing with the tabernacle. He said the tabernacle was a copy and a shadow of heavenly things. <clears throat> Just as Moses was warned by God when he was about to create the tabernacle, for he said, see, he said, you make all things according to the pattern which I've shown you in the mountain. So the tabernacle, there's three words to describe it. It's a copy and a shadow of of the spiritual world, entering the spiritual world, it's a pattern. So I believe it's not only for the Israelites, it's also something that we can use as we enter the spirit realm. So let's take a look at the PowerPoint of the tabernacle. It has um, an outer court, and uh, then it has a holy place, and it has a holy of holies, three different parts. This outer court uh, actually would correspond to your body, and the holy place would correspond to your soul, and the holy of holies would correspond 
to your spirit. There's three kinds of light there. The outer court had natural light in it, natural sense knowledge. The soul would have illumined knowledge. The lampstand gave you illumination. And the spirit, uh, the, 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 the spirit part of you, the uh, Holy of Holies, was lit by the Shekinah glory of God. All right, there was no light in there unless God appeared. And so that's a third kind of a light. So as we go deeper into God, we go from natural senses to illumination to direct revelation. All right, so let's talk about these six pieces of furniture. These are each different, these are ex experiences or steps that we can take that can tune our hearts to hear God's voice. The first is right way on the, on the left side, it's the gate that lets you enter into the tabernacle. The gate, um, the, the tribe of Judah was before this gate. That gate is the gate of salvation. You go into uh, the salvation through, you go into God's presence through praise and worship, through the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah means praise. So as I, I enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, I enter his courts with praise. So we come through the tribe of Judah, we go into the gate of salvation as, as we learn to hear God's voice. And then the first piece of furniture we stop at will be the altar. All right, and this is an altar where they uh, would place uh, sheep and uh, they were killed. And it's the place where Jesus, the Lamb of God, died for our sins. And it's the place where you and I present our bodies as a living sacrifice and we allow ourselves to die to the flesh so that we can come alive to the Spirit. So the first experience that I could, uh, the first question I could ask if I'm trying to journal one morning and I can't hear the voice of God, I could say, have I done these things? Have I entered into his presence with praise and worship? Have I presented myself as a living sacrifice on the altar, or do I have my own will on this issue? If I have my own will, that will hinder me from hearing God's will. So am I a living sacrifice? Is either answer, either way okay with me, or do I already know what I want God to say? Next piece of furniture is the laver. Those were some basins with water in it where they would wash themselves up. So I can ask myself this question. Have I washed myself with the washing of the water of the word? Have I been reading my Bible on a regular basis? Or has it been uh, three months since I opened my Bible and took a look at a verse? The next experience, uh, then I can go into my soul and I can ask, do I have this experience of the table of showbread? The table of showbread was a table which had bread on it and it was for show. And that's why it was called the table of showbread. And um, they would stand around that uh, unleavened bread once, uh, once a week or so, and they would eat the bread. So when you stand around a table with a group of people and you eat together, that would be considered fellowship. So I could ask myself that question, am I in fellowship with the body of Christ? Or um, do I have anger and bitterness, malice in my heart and judgment? Because if I do, that's going to hinder me from hearing God's voice. If I've forgiven everything against everyone. The next piece of furniture is the lampstand. It was a seven branch lampstand. It was lit with oil. It was made with beaten gold. Beaten gold is a cultivation of divine nature. So I could ask, do I have that experience? Have, uh, have I um, allowed illumination, the, the oil of the Holy Spirit to illumine verses of scripture, to leap them off the page? of the Bible and give me revelation knowledge. Am I praying over the Bible, am I reading it prayerfully and receiving revelation knowledge from it? Or am I just speed reading my way through and not really getting revelation? The next piece of furniture that I can stop at and ask my this question, it's, it's the altar of incense. And that was a place where they would uh, rekindle, uh, continually kindle um, a uh, an incense before the Lord as a fragrant aroma. They kindled it night and evening, made sure it, uh, even morning and evening, made sure it never went out. And that piece of furniture uh, uh, represents the worship that you and I offer into the nostrils of the Lord as a fragrant aroma to him. So I can ask, am I a worshiper? Or have I begun to grumble and moan and groan and complain and look at the negative, all right? Or am I a worshiper? In everything, am I giving thanks or, or aren't I? And if I am a worshiper, it balances me out. And that piece of furniture was actually four square. They called it four square. It was equal on all sides. And as I worship the Lord, it balances out my emotional life, brings me into balance. So I can ask, am I worshiping? Because if I am worshiping, the tips of that piece of furniture are equal with um, 
tips the wings in the ark of the, in the holy and uh, of the cherubim in the holy of holies. It lifts me up, takes me through a veil, and there's a veil that separates the the um, those two areas, the holy place and the holy of holies. And uh, that veil was actually rent by Jesus when he was died on Calvary. That veil was ripped from top to bottom so that every one of us can go into the Holy of Holies, not just the high priest. Because in the Old Testament, the only one who could go in was a high priest. When the high priest gets in there, we've now, it's going to symbolize my spirit. There's the Ark of the Covenant there, all right? And it's a big chest. It's got three things in it. It's got uh, mer uh, uh, a manna, a jar of manna, which would represent... Uh, the ongoing provision of God for my life on a daily basis. And if I'm tuned to my spirit, receiving spiritual revelation, it's a flow of living water within me. It's, it's provision, it's healing, it's anointing from within every single morning, every single day. So I can ask, do I have that experience? Am I receiving the daily provision of, of God through the anointing of the Holy Spirit within, through that living water? Uh, the second piece, uh, the second item in that uh, uh, in the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod that budded, which stands for divine attestation of God's authority. God said, I will tell you who I've ordained with authority. The person whose rod buds, he's the one I've given authority. And if I'm living out of my spirit, touching the spirit of God, I will have authority when I preach and when I teach. Jesus taught as those who had authority. And the third thing that was in the uh, Ark of the Covenant was the, the Ten Commandments, all right, the and um, so, again, we're, we're asking, all right, uh, am I living a life of obedience to the Lord? Now, of course, sometimes we do mess up, and that's why we have a mercy seat. The mercy seat was the lid, and, uh, and that's what the Lord Jesus Christ, his, his shed blood has offered mercy to us. How many are really glad there's a mercy seat on top of the Ten Commandments? Because if I didn't have a mercy seat, there's no way I could stand in God's presence. But because I can be cleansed by the blood... Of Jesus and God's mercy can descend upon me I can stand in his presence holy and spotless so I could ask myself that question do I stand in the presence of God holy and spotless allowing the blood of Jesus Christ to wash over my sin have I applied his blood have I repented of my sin and said God I thank you for your cleansing blood so those are six pieces of furniture that I can tune my heart through this is a tuning dial Finally, I have a tuning dial for my radio, all right, the radio in my heart. And, and if I'm having a hard time, I'm journeying in the morning and, and nothing's coming, there's nothing coming, I can, I can ask these questions. So let's just go through the questions one more time. I just want to go back to that last PowerPoint. The questions one more time would be, okay, at the altar, have I presented myself as a living sacrifice, all right? Have I given up my will in this issue I'm journeying about and saying, God, whatever you want is fine. Have I been washing myself by reading the Bible? Uh, have I, uh, am I walking in harmony with the body of Christ? Have I given up my bitterness, my anger, my resentment? Do I walk in love? Have I been allowing God to illumine scripture verses and leap them off the page? Am I worshiping continuously? And am I standing in the direct presence of God, fixing my eyes on something that symbolizes God to me? Some, in our case, it will be, am I fixing my eyes on Jesus um, who is the image of the invisible God. Now, I found that on the days that I couldn't hear God's voice, if I would tune myself through those six pieces of furniture, through, through those six questions, I was able to hear God's voice almost every single time. There were a few days I still couldn't get through, so the Lord finally showed me a second tuning dial, which we call a fine tuning dial. And... Um, in your Bibles, this fine-tuning dial is found in Hebrews. If you want to just turn there for a second, it's found in Hebrews uh, chapter 10. And uh, I can read it for you, or you can turn and look at it. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 22, is another tuning dial. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 22, he says, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holiest, the King James says holiest, enter into the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, which I mentioned that veil was rent from top to bottom between the holy place and the holy of holies. When Jesus died, it was rent, and we now have confidence to go directly into the presence of God and hear his voice speaking from within our spirit. Since we have a confidence to do this, since we've got a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. Boy, that's the phrase. Come on, let's get in there 
and let's make this thing happen. Let us draw near with four things, with a sincere heart or a true heart, with a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. So I realized, as I looked at that, I realized there's four more things I can do to tune my heart to hear the voice of God. If I've walked through the tabernacle experience and I'm still not hearing, what I'm going to ask is, hey, do I have a true heart? Do I really want to hear what God wants to say, or don't I want to hear about it? And maybe I'm afraid God's going to say, do something I don't want to do, so God, I'm not really, you know, I don't want to hear this. So if, if that's my attitude, that will be a barrier from me hearing his voice. Second uh, barrier here, thing I need to work through, is a full assurance of faith. I'm sitting there with my pen in my hand. I got my eyes fixed on Jesus. I'm saying, Lord, what do you want to say to me? And I'm sitting there doubting the whole experience and saying, I'm not really sure this works. How many know that is not a full assurance of faith? So if I have that doubt in my heart, that's going to be a barrier to keep me from hearing God's voice. And I've got to say, I repent of this doubt. I repent of this unbelief. And Father, I ask for the gift of faith to well up within me that I can believe that everything you've said about me in the Bible is true. I believe it. I receive it. I choose to write in simple childlike faith, believing there's a river within me and believing that river flows. That was my biggest block to journaling is I did not have a full assurance of faith. As I mentioned, I was a mighty man of doubt. And I really hated the fact I was a mighty man of doubt. And uh, I've gotten over that over the years. The Lord has helped me uh, as I've worked five or ten years. I'm moving from doubt to faith. So that was a big block for me, a big thing I had to tune through on a regular basis. Having, the third thing there in that verse is having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. So there I can ask the question, have I confessed all sins that are on my heart today? Do I have, if I've got any sins that are unconfessed, that's going to be a barrier and my spirit's going to be saying, bzz, 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 I'm not happy here. All right. So I've got to make sure to confess my sin, ask for the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. And the final phrase in verse 22, am I washed with pure water? And there's a marginal reference there that takes us over to another verse, which talks about being washed by the water, by the rhema, by the, the water of the rhema of God, or the word of God, which is rhema in that particular verse. Now, rhema is spoken word, so I can ask this question. Have I allowed what God spoke to me yesterday to wash down over me, cleanse me, and direct my life? Or haven't I been obedient to yesterday's rhema? Because if I haven't been obedient to yesterday's rhema, that can easily cut off today's revelation because God doesn't cast pearls before swine. And um, so the question I can ask, did I do what God asked me to do yesterday, or am I just mumbling around and not really doing that? So by working through um, these two things, I've now got two tuning dials that can allow me to hear God's voice. If you like two tuning dials, would you say amen? <laughs> now here's what I found. I found that by applying these two tuning dials, there has been no day in the last 26 years of my life that I have not been able to hear God's voice when I have gone to him and asked him to speak. Now, if you think that's fabulous, say amen. And, and it'll work for you. I believe if you work through these tuning dials, if you're stuck, just talk yourself through them. We've got kind of a checklist there in the big book on how to hear God's voice. And you can just check right down through it and ask, have I done this? Have I done this? Have I done this? And I don't normally go through that checklist. I normally just say, good morning, Jesus. I love you. What do you want to say to me? And if we're off and running, I don't go through the checklist. But if we're not off and running and something's blocked, then I go through the checklist and find out where did I get stuck. All right. If you like that, say amen. All right. Now I'd like to move on and just talk about internalizing a truth. How do we internalize a new truth into our lives? All right. And, and this is an extra little teaching. It's not in your seminar guide. It's not in your book. It's not anywhere. I just wrote it up a couple of days ago. All right. So uh, you can just listen up. And, uh, you know, my passion is I don't want to just hear something. I want to begin to live it. Amen. I mean, it's a wonderful truth that we've shared this weekend. But how many of you know if we go home and we don't internalize it, it's not going to do us any good. Amen. So I want to do a very short teaching here, maybe 15 minutes or so, on how to internalize a new truth. For example, and this, this truth would be, I want to live comfortably out of the voice of God on a daily basis. How do I get to that point in my life? Well, there's four steps, I believe, to internalizing a new truth, at least there are in my life. First of all, I hear with my ears the new idea. 
And secondly, I get some revelation from God. He illumines it. He opens my heart. He allows me to see it. And I say, yeah, that, that's really, really good. Third thing, I need to acquire some new skills through the anointing of the Spirit helping me to acquire it and through some diligent practice. Now, that's where I'm going to take about three months or so to work on acquiring some new skills. And finally, I'm going to discover that I can live naturally expressing this new truth into my lifestyle. So the four, uh, four steps to internalize a new truth, they're not magic. They're not instant. I believe they're a well-defined process, and for me, it's the four steps that I've just described to you. Now, Jesus said in one of his parables, he said, not everyone's going to internalize new truth. He said, we're going to plant some seed. We're going to plant some seed in some people's hearts. And some are going to have it choked out by the cares of the world. And he goes on and gives four or five things that can happen to these new seeds. So I understand, and you should understand, not everyone will internalize a new message. My prayer for you tonight is everyone in this room will internalize it. Let's see what Jesus said will happen to some people. He said some people are going to let Satan rip them, the cares of life. And in this case, Satan could rip these truths from you, from us through doubt, fear, or apathy. I just don't care enough to put in the energy to make this happen, or I'm too nervous, too afraid, think I'll quit. Some just uh, never let it get past their heads. They hear the idea, but they never say, God, give me revelation so I can see this thing. Some people let the cares of life uh, distract them from focusing on it. You know, I got a busy life, got a lot of stuff to do. This is a great weekend, but you know what? I'm back to my regular routine next week, and, and I don't know that I got enough time to internalize this. And the Bible says some people are going to go ahead and prepare their hearts properly, and they're going to get um, 30, 60, and 100 fold. He actually said it in the reverse order, 160 and 30 fold. He said they're going to bear a lot of fruit. My passion is I want to bear fruit. Man, I don't want to be in the first three categories. I want to be in the final category. All right? If that's your passion, would you say amen? He talks about the Pharisees of his day. He said seeing, they do not see, and hearing, they just don't hear. For this people's heart has grown dull. With their ears, they can barely hear. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. So how do we succeed in internalizing a truth? Now, I've mentioned to you on a couple of occasions that I take a year to learn something. I mean that with all of my heart. I do. I, I have a, a two words for this year for the Lord. I said, Lord, what do we focus on this year? He said, I want you to become this this year. All right, something new, something different, something that I've not been, something I've not even wanted to be because I've had a distaste for, for that whole area. And the Lord said, I want you to become good in this area. So I said, yes, Lord. All right. And I'm taking this whole year to focus on that one area. The last two years of my life, I have focused on an area. Whenever I focus on an area for a year or two, you get a book or two or three which describes for you, here's what I synthesized, here's what I understood, here's what I learned, and I laid it out in the most practical, biblical, and spirit-anointed way I could possibly do that. So because we've done that, I don't think it needs to take you an entire year. I think you could learn in three months um, what it took me a year to learn, because I think if you have a good teacher in front of you, they can speed the process up. And what we've done now is um, we've uh, these lessons, which we've learned, we have put into three-month courses with Christian Leadership University. These courses are available to you. We'll ship them straight to your home, and you can do the work from home, and you can learn in a fraction of the time with a fraction of the expense or pain the things that we've learned through a lot of pain. Well, if you like that idea, say amen. CLU Christian Leadership University offers you exceptional mentoring or coaching because we're going to assign you a personal instructor for every single course. We're going to end here um, because he's talking about Christian Leadership University. Uh, we have they're our supply they are our supplier of our courses, and then we take our courses and we tweak them for the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy. And it's working out very well. Paul and Heidi um, are excited about the, the class, the school, and what you all are doing. So am I. Jackie and I are excited. Uh, and we want to be available to you. And as we um, bring this week's class to a close, just want to remind you that I'm available to help you in any 
um, questions you have about your future course or next semester or um, what path path you're going to take. Um, uh, we can help you to design your bachelor's degree and master's degree and doctorate degree. We believe that by this time next year we have the doctorate degree program in place and people will be studying for the doctorate degree. In fact, after um, students complete the requirements for the associate's degree, that is the first five courses or the first five classes that you received in the email from me. Um, once uh, people complete those five classes and earn their associate's degree, then we can work with you individually and design your bachelor's degree program, which includes um, taking into consideration previous college experience and uh, a life's experience piece. And we will do the same with designing a master's degree program and a doctoral program. But the, the, ground, the ground courses, the basic courses, those five courses we've designed for the associate's degree are like required and then we take into consideration any further work that you have done. So we believe that God's going to bless the Paul Baker the School of Prophecy. God is using Pastor Paul mightily. Let us continue to pray for them on a daily basis. Paul and Heidi are uh, probably on their way or in on their way to or in Colorado at this time and praise God and then uh, early next week uh, they're going along with Pastor Marcus Wolverton, who's on with us tonight, um, to India to represent the Lord there. So we're, we're in some exciting times. God's got things planned for you. And um, on behalf of the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, as we get ready to close out this night's session, I want to let you know that Jackie and I are available to assist you in any way. So is Marcus Wolverton. And um, we want to be available and we will we will walk with you course by course and and help you in any way that we can. So we're just going to stop the recording now. Uh, I will email each of you the recording of tonight's lesson. I'll email that to you tomorrow for your refreshing and then we'll stop the recording. But we will keep we stay on for just a few minutes for any questions or comments.